Welcome to Sarpy Outlook, where we have meaningful conversations with interesting people with an eye toward advancing democratic ideals from an issues-based perspective. Our guest today is Nebraska State Senator Sue Crawford. Welcome, Sue. Thank you very much. I'm proud to be here tonight. Oh, proud to interview you and have this conversation. Excellent. Sue is a longtime Bellevue resident, and in addition to her senatorial duties, she is a professor of political science at Creighton, and she has a long, long list of community involvement. Right. So I Thank have you. Well, and I can tell a little bit about my district, if you'd like. Great. Yes, excellent. So um, I just started as a state senator in January, mm -hmm. so um, it was my first time being in public office. And um, I represent District 45, which is eastern Sarpy County, Bellevue, and Offutt. And so it runs from the Sarpy County boundaries north and south, and then it runs to 25th Street, mm -hmm. um, down to about Fairview Road, and then, and then goes out to 60th Street from there on south. Yeah. So, so kind of east Bellevue with a right, with some snatch of, of Sarpy south. County, and also includes um, Offutt. So Offutt is also a very important part of the district as well. I consider Offutt Bellevue. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, last year, as you mentioned, you made that leap from the poli-sci classroom into a campaign. And it wasn't just any old campaign, it was your campaign. Right. So what's the story? How, when, why did you get in, interested in politics and then start your own campaign? Oh, thank you. Well, my interest in politics really started at home, like this for many people. Um, my parents got multiple newspapers and multiple magazines, but most of my um, discussion about politics at home was pretty pragmatic and policy-oriented. So they talked quite a bit about what would work and um, different ideas. And one of the lessons that I learned from my dad, which I still hold to this day, um, is the importance of recognizing that when you're putting a policy into place, it's important to make sure you think about the people who are already doing what you're trying to get other people to do. So he would tell the story of how he had been a farmer who was always involved in conservation. Um, but when the conservation policy came into place, it paid people to take land out of production into conservation. And so people who had been not conserving before really benefited from that policy, and people who had been doing the right thing all along, mm -hmm. my dad, uh, had not. <laughs> so that's one of those early lessons that I learned around the kitchen table, just talking about how policies work. I don't really remember them talking very much about party. And my father was on the school board, the township board, um, and the Rural Water District Board, but I don't remember us ever campaigning for that. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it was very much um, a situation in a small rural area that somebody steps up to serve, and, and that's how he got involved. But I did get to see that uh, the importance of stepping out and being involved in the community and how important it is to have people who are willing to serve in those ways. And so that was an important you know, background in terms of my in terms of my interest in politics. So um, I really didn't get introduced to party politics and campaigning until I went to college. And there um, I got introduced to the young Democrats who were important to my um, socialization and into politics. And I'm very grateful that uh, where I went at Northeast Missouri State, now it's Truman State, um, they were the, the the Young Democrats group on campus was very closely connected to the county party organization. So that was my first introduction to a county party organization. Mm -hmm. And it was just a great experience. Um, it's a chance to meet people yeah. who are um, from, who have been involved in politics a long time, lots of different um, levels of engagement, um, people who have uh, run for office at all different levels. So that was my first introduction to how important the county parties are. And then after that, I really went back into um, academia and did a lot of research and policy involvement. So it wasn't really until I had a conversation with um, Senator Paul Hartnett uh -huh. that I decided to uh, step back into um, campaigning and, and um, getting involved in this side of politics. Most of what I had done was much more about policy advising and consulting. Mm -hmm. So really, it took somebody to simply ask me, uh, would you consider running? And and to ask me again when I sort of laughed it <laughs> off the first time, are you kidding? I don't know. Um, so that's what I tell people all the time. Um, our government's only as good as the people who run. Yeah. And a lot of people like me don't consider running unless you ask us. So I ask people, look around at the people around you and see who you should ask to run for office. Look in the mirror. Think about running for office. Um, and 
And really, that was the step. And when I decided to run, the Sarpy County Democrat Party was right there um, to support me. Mm -hmm. So one of the first things I did when I uh, decided to run was come to the Sarpy County Democrat Party meeting and met people, and I was welcomed you know, with open arms, and they were a key support group um, in terms of helping me to run the campaign. They provided training, provided books, um, and um, to really help me run the campaign. And so even though in Nebraska it's a nonpartisan race, the parties still play an important role in being that infrastructure and really helping people um, get their campaigns up and running and they also are just a source of mentors and volunteers and so um, again I would just really encourage people to check out when and where your county party meets and, well, and be I there. I have the answer to that. You have Sue, the answer to that, I absolutely. <laughs> Sarby County Democrats meet every third Wednesday of the month. Wednesday of the month, that's right, I know that. And it is at High V in Shadow Lake upstairs and we have, uh, you can eat from the deli downstairs and bring it up like from 6.30 to 7 and the meeting starts at 7. Mm -hmm. And it's a, really like you say, it's, it's been a growth experience for me right. and it continues to be and I see other people sitting around that table who are growing too. Right, absolutely. So. And I tell people if you step up to run, other people will step up to help. Mm -hmm. So I was surprised by that but um, amazed how people really stepped up to help when I stepped, up, stepped mm -hmm. out to run. Well, we've talked about party and non-party. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. a, a non-partisan feel, but yet you, you needed the party to, to, uh, to give you some support. Uh, now, state uh, races are non-partisan. That's correct. On the ballots, there's neither an R nor a D near the names. Yet somehow, a lot of people, when they go into that booth, do know. They can see the invisible ink. Right. And they know that you have a D by your name. Yet here in Sarpy County, we know that D's are outnumbered by the R's and the N's, the nonpartisans. Yet here you are in the unicameral, and your opponent isn't. Can you tell us about how you handle that campaigning? Sure. Well, I've been a lifelong Democrat, but I've also been a lifelong bridge builder. And so that was an experience that I could bring and talk to people about how at my work I had been a bridge builder and how I expected to be a bridge builder mm -hmm. in Lincoln. The other thing is that although there are more, there, the Democrats may be outnumbered, it's not by near as much as people think. There are a lot of Democrats in Sarpy County, and that's important for people, for Democrats to know. Um, I run into Democrats all the time who say, I don't think there are any other Democrats around. And there oh, are no. many. There are many. So that's one point that I think it's important for Sarpy County Democrats to know. Um, but then second, many people in Nebraska, regardless of the party they belong to, value the nonpartisan unicameral. And that tradition is so important. And so I really talked about that, and people of both parties were glad to see that I was respected that tradition and expected to govern in that tradition. And that was really important in building support. I think um, the other candidate really ran a much more partisan campaign, mm -hmm. and I ran a much more bipartisan campaign um, and reached out to, re to Republicans and involved them in the campaign as well, where we had shared interests, and then also really stressed the importance that I was going to go there and respect that nonpartisan tradition. Absolutely, and I, I see that on the floor that you do. Um, your first session was extremely, I think, extremely successful for, a, for a first timer. That's Can right. you tell that's us right. about sure. that? And I think that's a testimony. We're proud. I Thank hope you. you're proud. Thank you. I am. Thank you. And that, I think, is a testimony to the nonpartisan unicameral to have a freshman senator from the minority party get two bills passed and a third, the content of a third bill passed, you know, it would be unheard of in a very partisan body. Yeah. You know, and a colleague of mine who's in Kansas talked about the difficulty of even get an, getting an amendment passed. Um, and so the fact that the unicameral is nonpartisan means that we can really go in there and, and get involved and get support for our bills. And so I was very happy that, that we got the transparency bill passed, which is my priority bill, to require all contracts to be online so citizens can um, see what's going on with government contracts. And also a wage subsidy program to really try to help businesses hire low-income individuals and give them some experience so they can get the next job. So It was offering people a hand exactly. up, not a hand out. Exactly, exactly. So that was very valuable. People often ask me what I was most surprised by. 
And as a political scientist, I was really surprised at how well it works and how nonpartisan it really is. Because as you say, people really people Good. talk That's about it being nonpartisan. Right I know people talk about it being nonpartisan, but I was a bit skeptical because you do know who the Democrats are and you know who the Republicans are. But when you get there, it's it just operates in a different way. And it's not like people don't know or forget, but there's just a very strong culture of making sure we're doing the right thing for Nebraska. And I give my Republican colleagues a lot of credit for that as well. I mean, they um, respect that tradition as well, most of them. And if they were to choose someday to decide to just be partisan hacks, there'd be very little to keep that from, to stop them from doing that. And so they deserve a lot of credit too for keeping that nonpartisan mm -hmm. tradition and nonpartisan um, um, way of governing hap um, happening. I think part of it too is we have nonpartisan primaries. And so that way people who, in order to get out of the primary, you have to talk to everyone and not just a, a radical slice of a party. And so that helps ah. us get more moderate people into the, into the unicameral. And the leadership is selected by secret ballot. And so you get really the best people selected. And like in, for the Speaker of the House and for and, the committee chairs. Right, and committee chairs. In most places, they're, they're selected by party. We get selected oh. by secret ballot. And so, you know, last See, year. That's a professor. You're yeah, always teaching. Always, yes, that's right. Always teaching. So last year, we had um, out of 49, there were 19 who were um, Democrats or independents. But we. The Democrats and Independents had a majority of the committee chairs, so that would just be unheard of anyplace else. And it was mm -hmm. a real key part of what makes it work. Well, I have to say, I, I am a fan of yours in that I uh, tape the Nebraska oh. legislature things on, on NET TV. And uh, I realize what you're saying is true, that uh, things do work a lot of the time mm -hmm. without those differences. I. I have to say that there are times on the floor that I see you rising even above that. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I do. And, and I, I find a level of respect. I, I promised I wouldn't fawn. But I, I think there's a level of respect for you even after those few months being oh, there. That, you. that when you say you respect them, you don't just say it. Mm -hmm. You mean it. Right, you really right. do, and it yeah. shows, and they I realize work, it. Right. I work very hard to listen to people mm -hmm. on both sides, and work very hard to build relationships with people of both parties, and to support bills that they care about, that I care about as well. I mean, one of the bills that I was um, excited about passing this last year was for small businesses. It was a bill that Senator Shoemaker had introduced, oh. and it actually came out of banking, commerce, and insurance, and I pushed the committee to have it as a priority bill from our committee, and it made it easier for people to raise that first capital. That was a great idea, and yeah. it came from and his Schumacher experience. And is a Republican. It, yeah, exactly, And uh, but he is a Republican who understands small business. He's been a lawyer for people trying to start small businesses. That was a great idea, and so I was happy to support and push that bill past the line. Yeah. Great. Uh, now, what key bills and issues should we look forward to this coming January? Now, this is going to be a short session, too. Right. It is a short a lot, session. A lot to do. My and, gosh. And much to do, exactly. So we have several bills in, in the Nebraska Unicameral. It's a two-year session. Mm -hmm. So anything that was introduced last year that didn't die is still on the plate. For next session. 406 bills, my right, research. Said. Right, right. Very good. Good research. Yes. <laughs> NebraskaLegislature.gov. There you go. There you go. And that is one of the other great things about the unicameral is it's so easy for people to get on and watch mm -hmm. and to do this kind of research as a citizen, and I really appreciate that. Um, so in, in addition to those things, we have several key committees that have been working on bills. Mm -hmm. So we've had a tax committee that's been going across the state talking about tails talking about taxes, about uh, trying to do something about property taxes, about upgrading our um, sales taxes, and what, uh -huh. what changes should be made in income taxes. And I and some others have been talking about the importance of retiree tax being a part of that package. Mm -hmm. um, we have a group that's been talking about water, which is a key yes. issue, especially in western Nebraska. And um, the Education Committee has been having hearings about the funding formula. We just had a hearing today about school boundaries in the learning community. So many of those are going to be hot topics. And then also um, the corrections um, 
crowding is going to be an issue, um, as well as um, issues about mental health care in the prisons and trying to make sure that we're um, protecting the public safety, um, and, but also not having prisons, prison overcrowding, so how we make that balance. So those are all some key issues that we'll be facing next session. How can we help you? Good question. Um, we will be introducing bills. Um, and so one of the things, one of the best things for citizens to do is to write to their senator, including me, um, but <laughs> other senators as well, um, if there are issues that you care about. And so in terms of if you like the bills that I'm introducing, um, it's good if you email other senators to let them know that you care about it. The other thing that, that really helps us in supporting a bill is to have personal stories. So my staff does a great job of pulling together statistics and facts and figures to support the bill. Um, but what really helps other people understand the bill and support it often are those personal stories. So if you um, like an idea that I've proposed, one of the things, one of the best ways that you can help is if you have a personal story related to that bill, if you're willing to testify or willing to send an email that shares that personal story, or if you can help recruit other people who have that personal story um, to come share it either um, at the hearing or via email. That's mm -hmm. very helpful. And sometimes it's interesting just to go to the hearings, whether you're going to testify or not, uh, to be there, not right. to just watch it on TV or, right. or the computer, but to be there and uh, to see that, that process going on. And, and right. it's, it's a fascinating thing. And I, we also, our office does not uh, legislative update. And so if people yes. are interested in being on the email, they can get that legislative update, and that sometimes gives them other ways to help or be involved. And we have a town hall meeting coming up on November 21st yeah. um, at 7 o'clock at the Bellevue Military Veterans Service Center. And you will have regular town meetings thereafter. Mm -hmm. yes. And you will have those updates. Right, and we uh, usually post the town hall the, meetings in the Bellevue Leader uh -huh. and then also you know, on our social media. Yeah. Is, are you on Facebook? Yes. And so, so that would come out as an event on Facebook? Absolutely. Okay. So our Senate office has a Facebook page, and our Senate office has a Twitter account. So if people want to follow, they can follow either of those okay. two. All right. Very good. Because, you know, um, before we leave, and it is getting that time, I uh, would be remiss if I didn't tell you how much I admire you, how much we admire you. Uh, when I think about your leadership, uh, some words came to mind. Level-headed oh, is one. Fact-based, I see you operating not from uh, ideology, but from facts. And you don't twi try to twist those facts to, to match your ideology. And also, as I was thinking about this, and I think it has come across in these last few minutes, is the respect mm -hmm. that you truly drew have for people, mm -hmm. and that it helps the legislative process. Now, you mentioned the town halls right. and your newsletters. I, I, you call them legislative updates. I Correct. call them newsletters. newsletters yeah, they're, newsletters. Yeah, they're, right. they're, uh, you can find them uh, on NebraskaLegislature.gov. Correct. And uh, you write those yourself, I think, don't you? Um, well, my staff and I write them together. So um, I also want to give credit to Caitlin Reese, who is my legislative aide, and she helps to make sure I have those facts, um, uh -huh. to um, make sure that we're able to come across in our discussions and debates and make sure we have the facts right. And she also helps with our outreach. And I have um, um, another um, staff person, Courtney, who also helps with some of the social media as well. So it's a real team effort, just like running for office is a team effort, being an yes. effective legislator is a yes, team effort Yes, the Sioux well. Crew. That's right. It was so much fun being part Good, of the Sioux Crew. Thank yeah. you. Um, now, your newsletter, you said you have help, that they do help you, mm -hmm. but I have to say they are really informative. Thank you. When I read them, I don't feel like I'm being spun. Right, right. Well, we try to include some things about what's happening, and we try to include some civic education pieces in there as well. Professor? We really try to help people. Exactly. <laughs> so, always teaching, trying to help people learn about the process and how to get involved in the process, because that's really one of my passions, and one of the reasons I went into political science uh -huh. as a professor in the first place, is to help people understand that this government is your government, and there are ways you can get involved. And I want people to understand that and to believe it and to get involved. And the, the 
the county party is there to help. Absolutely. And they'll give you books. They'll so give you they will. all kinds of things. That's right. They, Whether you want you to run. They give you a program and, right. and, and keep you on track. Right. Whether you want to run for office or just learn more about it, I really encourage you to check mm -hmm. out your county party. And mm -hmm. it's a good place to meet other people who have been involved in politics for a long time. Yeah. I think it's really a hidden treasure of our democracy that doesn't get discussed in textbooks or other places. And mm -hmm. so, but it's there in every county and um, it's a place to connect with people. And if you're thinking about maybe running for office someday um, even, it's a good place to go and start making those connections and seeing what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank I've you, it was a fun. pleasure. Thank oh, you. I've had fun. Now before we go, I would like to tell our viewers that if you enjoy this conversation and other conversations that are on Sarpy Outlook, Share them with your friends. We're on Facebook. Uh, we're, uh, we have a Twitter account. I don't know what you do besides tweet. <laughs> but uh, we <laughs> Twitter <laughs> accounts, Facebook, and the Sarpy County Democrats uh, website also. So please do uh, spread the word because uh, we're very, very proud to advance democratic ideals from an issue-based perspective. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you.